as you can see I've got a couple boxes here so I got my props and um, the Lord just spoke something to me uh, I wait for a couple of you guys to get logged in but I think this is very important um, it even applies to myself and I have a couple scriptures I want to share with you guys um, Lord just open up the hearts open up the minds Lord God that they can receive truth father that's what we want more than anything else we understand that so many people have different views different perspectives but we know Lord that your word is the truth help us to interpret it correctly help us to walk in that truth in Jesus name amen all right guys so I'm going to give you this word you know how the Lord speaks to me it's always like in pictures and images right so check this out <clears throat> Romans 117, for therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, all right? And we know faith cometh by what? Hearing the word of God. First Timothy 316 says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, all right? So nobody, we've talked about this the other day, nobody can say they completely know God, they completely understand God, and they, they just understand everything about God. Every believer has different revelations and pieces, but nobody really has the full picture of God, okay? I'm just going to build the foundation with scripture for you guys. Ephesians 4, 18, having the understanding darkening, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. All right, we're going to talk about that a little bit. I just want to give you these Bible verses first. John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. All right, and then the last verse, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So this is where I want to start. I have this box right here and I'm going to show you something. But it says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. All right? They are foolishness unto him. Here's the thing. Just because you're filled with the Spirit, just because um, you're familiar with the Spirit, does not mean that you never walk in your carnality. I'll give you an example. If somebody cusses you out, uh, slaps you in the face or your spouse does something you don't like, your flesh will usually want to rise up and respond, right? The carnal man. So you're not just walking around spiritual all the time. So there are cases where there are things that happen in this life, all right? And this is why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding that you can't receive or perceive what God is doing because you have your own preconceived notions about it, okay? And because... Um, you see something from a carnal perspective, and there can be a lot of contributing figures to the uh, figures to that, and that's where this box comes into place. And this is what the Lord showed me. So first, we'll start with you as an individual, then we'll move to the big box, which is the church. Now, I'm gonna use myself. As I got saved, I didn't have all the answers in the beginning. I loved the Lord, uh, but as I began to grow with the Lord, as I began to walk with the Lord, I started to see that some of the stuff that people taught me wasn't necessarily right when I studied for myself okay so here's the first problem we get boxed in because of what people taught us we just go with that it might be somebody that you look up to you know what I'm saying that you admire and so whatever they taught you all right it makes this boundary right and you live inside of that and it was to the point where there were certain things that I was saying certain things that I was defending and even certain individuals that I would come against, right? Because I was just speaking off of what I was taught as a child. You know, hey, I love Jesus. These are the people that I look up to, all right? And this is what they told me. So I just took it as gold. But the Bible says to work out your own salvation, right? To study to show yourself approved. And as I begin to study, this is what happened. I begin to step out of the box, all right, that was created for me. Here's the issue, with religious, religious folks and stuff, once I started stepping out of the box and God began to show me things, right? From faith to faith, glory to glory, he began to give me more revelation. People got mad and upset, all right? Because maybe they didn't have the revelation that God was giving me or what he was showing me. And so what happens is they want you to get back in the box. And you see this in religion all the time. There's things that we do and there's things that we have been taught that are wrong, okay? 
So just because somebody popular said it or they taught it or a lot of people supported it. And so then what ends up happening is we just, we're loyal to that. And what God is trying to do, he's trying to unpack that. Okay, he's trying first with you as an individual, you study the word, you spend time in the presence of God and ask him what the truth is. And then what you'll see is you'll begin to see that, man, there's some things in church that we teach like as is truth and as doctrine, but really it's preference. Really, it's a matter of opinion. And so let, and here's the crazy part. What the church might be doing is not even necessarily wrong. It might not even be sin. It might not even be false teaching. But the thing is, it might just be a preference and it might work for that particular church. But here's the issue, right? When God begins to unbox you and call you to other things, you'll have people trying to box you in. And sometimes you might want to cave into that pressure to be accepted, not to be rejected. You know, it could be so many things. And then you'll be doubting yourself. You'll be doubting what God called you to do. And that is the, that is the part where you have to use wisdom and really pray because what some people do, right, is they'll, they'll, their mind will be liberated, right? And they'll walk out of something, but then turn around and condemn it, right? But just because that's not for you doesn't mean it's of the devil, if that makes any sense. And this is the importance of what? Knowing the Bible, knowing the scripture. The thing that the thing that people do, right? Imagine this box is your mind. All of your memories, all of your experiences, the church that you grew up, it shapes what? Your perspective. And so when anybody when somebody comes, right, and they bring something, they present something to you that is not in this box that is outside of your perspective, a lot of people are not open to receiving it. And check this out. This is where it gets real crazy. Your mind will be boxed in and you'll say, you know what? I can't receive from a black person. I can't receive from a white person. I can't receive for a poor, a poor person or whatever it is. I can't receive from this person because they don't believe like me. All right. Or, or because they don't dress like me. I can't receive from them. All right. And so the Lord is trying to unpack you and give you revelation. And here's the crazy thing. You get so caught up in the way that you see things that, yes, you could be walking in the spirit. All right. But you're carnal in some areas or you have a carnal understanding of something that somebody else might have a revelation about. So you speak on it in error and you speak on it from that carnal place or you speak on it from a lack of understanding and you're not open to getting the revelation and I've, I, I'm telling you I used to do it God made me repent it was look I can't even really say everything that God has showed me uh, on Facebook or social media because people will not be able to receive it if I begin to if I begin to teach and show you things that God has shown me in the scripture where he's corrected me and I shared it with people, people just, they can't receive it. It's foolishness to them. That's why I'll give you an example, and I know some of you are going to hate it, the whole Kanye West thing. Check this out. I never, ever once said that man was saved. I never, ever once said to follow that man and everything that he does and emulate him. I said, he's open to God. Let's pray for him. Number one, that his soul gets saved and transformed. Let's pray that he gets discipled and connected with the right kind of Christians, not these gummy bear Christians who are not going to check him. He even went on to Joe Osteen's church the other day, and he said, man, a couple years ago when I made the Life of Pablo album, uh, Christians in America are so watered down, they're too scared to correct me. Kanye West said this. And so so what, what I'm talking about, you know, people with a boxed in mind, right? They just have their personal opinions and their feelings about Kanye West, and they don't even listen to what this man just said. He said the truth. He said, man, I was doing all this stuff, and Christians were too concerned with being politically correct, socially acceptable, right, that they wouldn't even correct me. And so this brings me to the next thing, the church, right? The church is boxed in. You can call it the four walls of the church. You can call it we're boxed in because of religion. And so we're not moving uh, like in, in the things that God wants us to move, moving in power, moving in authority, moving in dominion, moving in love, moving in grace. And, and what the Lord showed me is some people are boxed in. Right. And I had and I prayed about this. All right? I told you guys I've tried to connect with many people. All right. And a lot of people have rejected me. And I said, man, Lord, why? I just want to win souls. 
I just want to connect with the body of Christ. I just want to have unity. And then the Lord allows certain individuals to cross my path. And it's big name people that you know. And they told me some things that happened behind the scenes. And the Lord said, look, man, I'm protecting you from that. A lot of people in the church, they're not walking in what God desires for the church to walk in because they're boxed in by a love of money. They're boxed in by a love of, I want to have a mega church. And so God is calling them to step out, but they don't want to step out because I, I'm just so loyal to getting money, right? If it's not bringing in money or if it's going to hinder the money flow, then I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to address it. I'm not going to step out that box. And so anybody that we feel is going to step outside of that box is going to speak the truth, is going to rebuke. We're not going to bring them into the fold. And so what we have is if I take if I take this box and this box, this is why we have so much division and so so much craziness in the church because I'm boxed into my way of doing things, you're boxed into your way, and even though we all call ourselves Christians, right? And we're all next to each other, we're still isolated and separated. And so the Lord's really been showing that to me. I always tell you guys, do not take Marcus Rogers' word for anything. You go read the word for yourself. It's a lot of things that I used to do and that I used to say. And as I begin to study the word for myself, I realized, man, I was wrong for that. I was wrong for how I handled that. And so you can't be so boxed in and think that you know everything, that you're unteachable and you're not open. And so what we're, what we're going to see happening and what we're already seeing happening is the Lord is unpacking this thing we call religion, okay? It's a lot of stuff that we do in the church that if Jesus walked in the church, he wouldn't even recognize. He's like, what is this? And what are you guys doing? What is that for? All right, and so the Lord is unpacking that. And here's the thing that you need to know. Some of you are going to reject what I'm saying, but some of you know, you're going to start walking into things and people are not going to understand. They are not going to understand. They're going to bash you. They're going to ridicule you. They're going to reject you. They're going to call you false prophet. They're going to call you false teacher. Um, they're going to say, you know, you're doing this by the devil. And, 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 you know, it's so crazy. Some of you see it. We have these boxes, right, of, uh, you could say, denominations, different kind of churches, different rules, standards, and regulations. And let me tell you something. Oh, Lord, help me with this. There's some things that you might not agree with. I'll just be real. All right, wearing skirts. You guys know that in a lot of Pentecostal apostolic churches, the women wear skirts. They don't wear pants. Now, some people will look at that and they say, man, that's religion that they wear those skirts, right? And I don't have to wear skirts to be saved. And here's the thing. When God unpacks your mind, you are absolutely right. A skirt is not what's going to get you into heaven and it's not what's going to send you to hell if you don't wear it. But at the same time, if that person is willing to consecrate their life and be so set aside, God will honor that sacrifice. He will. And that's not to belittle the other person, but that's their personal conviction. That's what they were willing to give up for the Lord. Now, the problem is when people want to put the skirts on everybody, and I'm just using skirts as an example. They want to put the skirts on everybody, and you're going to hell if you don't look like me, and you're going to hell if you don't dress like me, and you're going to hell, you're a false prophet if you don't do it like me. And so that's one of the things that God is trying to unpack in the church and realize, look, man, as long as the word of God right is not compromised and then even even me saying that is tricky because people interpret it different and people use scripture to justify you know certain rules and regulations that they do look the bible says to be baptized in the water and of the spirit or you cannot enter the kingdom of god okay everything else that people debate about check this out even peter and paul were arguing the guys who were writing the new testament were arguing and so it's like nothing has changed while they were writing the doctrine, while that Paul was talking about how the church should function and the fivefold ministry and all that stuff. Him and Peter, who were actually, Peter was actually walking with Jesus. 
they were arguing. And I even believe Paul had an argument with Mark, which caused them to go their separate ways. And this is the problem that we have in the church. Everybody is so boxed in that you, and this is what I wanted to say the whole video. Everybody is so in their little box that if you're not in my box, you're a false prophet, right? And, and, and the Lord is not pleased with that. So it's like, if you're not part of my denomination, if you're not part of what I believe, and I'm not saying just any de denomination because they're all false dom denominations out there. But what I'm saying is people get so arrogant. If you don't dress like me, all right, if you don't believe everything like I believe it, do everything like I do it, then you're not allowed to be in this box. And so we have these cliques in the church. And then what happens is you have people within the box yelling out of the box to other people saying you're false. You're self-righteous, you're wrong. And the reality is no, you're just operating in your lane and then God has different lanes for people. The genius of God is there's so many different kind of individuals with so many different type of backgrounds that I can reach people that you can't reach and you can reach people who I can't reach. And, it's, and just like I was talking about with this Colin Kaepernick thing earlier, why is it, I'm gonna give you a, a worldly example. Some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but it's in the sports world. Stephen A. Smith said something about Colin Kaepernick today, and people start attacking him and bashing him and beating him up and saying he's a sellout. Then somebody else, Shannon Sharp, says the same exact thing, but he doesn't get the same backlash. Why? Because we like this person, but we don't like this person. Kanye West, once again, I'm going to use it. And you guys think I'm obsessed with Kanye. I love using Kanye as a teaching tool. All these people mad that Kanye went to Joe Osteen's church. And if Kanye walked in your church, what you going to do? You're going to smile. Hopefully, if you if you walk with the love of Christ, he's going to walk in your church. Are you going to sit there and start rebuking him and bashing him and start yelling at him right from the jump and telling him everything that he's doing wrong and demanding that he just fix it right now? I mean, be real. Like, really think about that. If, if, if all the people that are so mad that Kanye went to Osteen's church are mad with him, period. If he walked in your church and sat down next to you, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, Kanye, you need to repent. And you did this wrong and you did this wrong. That's not even Christ-like. That's not even how God deals with you and me. With love and kindness have I drawn you. Yes, I could give you the truth, but I also got to use wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. And so it's just, it's stuff like that, that people having their personal boxes, right? And then what they do is they elevate it. Like this is the standard. I know everything about God. I understand all the scriptures. I'm not wrong about anything. I'm right in everything. And anybody else who isn't in this box is going to hell and they're wrong. And God is not pleased with that. And so what the Lord has personally been dealing with me about it's balance. This is the word that I use for everything, right? Some churches are so in the in the gifts. You know, they talk about prophesying and all this stuff all the time, right? But then they don't talk about the standards. They don't talk about living holy. They don't talk about sin. Then some churches, they're so religious and they got all these rules and they're talking about they live in holy, but then they don't operate and flow in the spirit in the gifts. God wants to unpack all that garbage and have us walking in the middle in balance. It's okay to operate in the gifts, all right? But also you need to operate in the fruits of the spirit, right? It's okay to prophesy, but what about self-control, fruit of the spirit? It's okay to talk about heaven, but what about hell, okay? It's okay to want to correct Kanye, but what about pray for Kanye West? It's okay to point out sin, but what about also loving the sinner and discipling the sinner, Right. That and a lot of Christians, if I could really sum up everything that I'm saying is we're not walking in balance. You have Christians. It's just bash, bash, bash everybody all the time. Everybody's going to hell and they don't walk in love. Then you have people who Jesus loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. But there's no, hey, you need to repent. Hey, you need to change that up. And so God is trying to raise up a generation of people that are going to be balanced. And a lot of people who are not balanced 
all right, are going to come against those who are walking in balance because they're not going to understand it. And so I guess that's probably the big prophetic word that you can take away from this if you understand it. God is going to raise up a balanced uh, group of believers who are going to do great and mighty things. But people who are unbalanced are going to look at it and say, oh, that's not of God. Oh, I don't agree with that. And what do we read the Bible verses? Check it out. It says, uh, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. So some people are just not going to want to receive it. For example, I love using Kanye West. Some people don't want to see Kanye West saved. And what do they say? Oh, he sold his soul to the devil. All of our souls belong to the devil. When Adam sinned, that's why Jesus did what? He redeemed us. What did he do? He paid the price for us. I had some people, and once again, the Bible says ignorant. They're ignorant to the scripture. They're just saying what somebody else taught them or told them that they looked up to and they never studied for themselves. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. All of our souls belong to the devil. But Jesus redeemed us, and then we choose to believe. And what he did for us on the cross. And so it's a lot of things I used to say that people are still saying and doing that was wrong, that was ignorant. And God is trying to correct that and help us to walk in balance. But here's the thing also. Where God has called me to might not be where he's called you to do. And just because you're you're doing what you're doing and I'm doing what I'm doing doesn't mean that they're wrong. So like I said, with the religious stuff, once again, you look at the box. God is trying to unpack that. And a lot of people's hearts are just going to be tested. They're going to be tested. They're going to say, man, is that of God? And here's the last thing that I want to say about all of that. Another thing that people don't understand. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Do you understand that God can use people that are not saved? And I keep saying this and people are just not hearing it. He can use people that are not saved. If you actually read your Bible... He used the Babylonians. He used Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says he, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He sent an evil spirit to torment Saul. So people, when, when you try to explain stuff to them, and this is the difficult thing with social media, they can't receive it. It's foolishness to them. Why? Because they don't know the scripture. They don't know the word of God. And then they, in ignorance, they bash and they attack and they don't even know what they're talking about. So not just for me, also for you. God is going to call you to do some things, instruct you to do some things. And the reality is, man, look, I love people, right? And everybody, you know, who knows me, you know, I'm bold on the internet, but they all, when they meet me, they say, man, you're a real humble guy, man. And that's the truth because I, I really don't feel like I have any reason to be arrogant. It's only by the grace of God. But even when I walk with that kind of energy, no matter what I do, there's still people who hate me. There's still people who don't agree with what I do, even though I'm doing it for the Lord, even though I love the Lord, even though I want to see souls be saved, even though the fruit is there. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, that's just how people are. And no matter what I do, I, ha I have to come to that realization that, man, it's always going to be oftentimes a fight against the, the church folks coming against you, not even the world. My The number one people that come against me is church folks. All right. And so if you want to do big things for God, I'm telling you, don't, I wouldn't even worry about too much the world attacking you. The big problem is going to be religious folks, jealous church folks, people who think that they should be in your position, people who think that they can do it better than you. And so you're going to have to have the strength and the courage to say, you know what? I'm stepping out the box. And if I got to step out the box alone, like Peter, if I got to step out the boat alone, I'm going to just do what God has called me to do. And that's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for people who are going to do what he's called them to do, say what he's called them to say, regardless of the backlash. And like I told you guys at the beginning, most churches, they don't want that. They want to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. So they're boxed in, right? They're boxed in by business friendly Jesus. They want to present something to you where we can be the church, but not offend the world. And, and here, I get, I give you, I got, this is, this is what I'll be trying to tell you guys. The Lord has shown me so much that I feel like a lot of times if I share it with people, they don't get it. So one thing people say about me, they say, man, we don't, we, we can't have brother Marcus come preach at our church because he's too controversial. 
Jesus was controversial. That's why they killed them. The disciples were controversial. What they set out their mouth was controversial, right? Because they were not politically correct. Then people say, man, brother Marcus causes division. The Bible says, I've come with a sword. He's come with a sword to divide. If you speak the truth, it's going to cause division. You're going to have the people who accept it and the people who reject it, the people who hate it and the people who love it. So why is it that churches and Christians think that you're not going to cause division? Why do we think, oh, we're, we're doing a good thing? Look, if the Bible says, if all men are speaking good of you, woe to you. You know how you know you're really doing right is when you have people coming against you, speaking bad about you. But the church is trying to hide in this little box where let's try to please. Them. And so we water down the truth. And the Lord saying, no, I'm trying to break you all out of that box where you don't care and break you out of that box of your security where you, you say, I'm hiding in this box because I need resources, I need income, I need my job. No, the Lord is about to break some people out of the box and they're just gonna go and they're gonna trust him. So I said a lot in this video, man. I'm gonna end this video, but if you got a prayer request, you know, post it in the comments. I love you guys. Be blessed, be encouraged in Jesus' name.